Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Dynamo BIM. I'm Dana DeFilippi and today on Dynamo Shorts we are going to discuss how to coordinate the door against the wall it's hosted to. In particular we're going to look at the fire rating and the wall tight mark, but this approach could really work for any type of hosted element. So fire dampers, anything that is really hosted to the wall or any other face we can start to associate to that wall or face. So let's get started. And you can see I am in the architectural sample file in Revit 2025, architectural sample file that is, and working within the door schedule. Now I've added a few parameters here. Uh, the ones in orange are the ones that I would like to coordinate, uh, you know, or have my designer or architect go in to coordinate based off of these purple cells. And these are parameters that I went ahead and created in fields uh, as text fields that can vary by group instance, both for the fire rating as well as the type mark. So essentially, I'm going to go ahead and populate these two parameters and their data across all of the doors based off of the wall that they are hosted to and that wall's information. So we'll, we'll go ahead and open up Dynamo here. Now in this category, in this situation, I am getting doors, but once again, you could use any category of elements Go ahead and select doors in my categories drop down and get all elements of category. Pretty typical here. Um, something I am always doing pretty much at the start of every script, getting category and getting the, all of the elements of that category. Because I have it left on automatic, it's going to automatically run and give me all of those elements. So just like within a schedule, I now have those 142 elements within my project relative to doors or the door category. Now in this case what I'd like to do is get the host info. If we actually look at the library here under Revit elements and family instance we can see that we can actually get the host of these family instances in this case, once again, doors. And we can see that this, these doors, each one of these line items, now has a wall that it is hosted to. Some of the walls are the same, right? This wall has a few doors placed inside of it, or is hosting a few doors. But once again, we could use this with any category. Maybe we want to use uh, one of an MEP equipments that's hosting to a wall what have you, we can do that as well. So I will go ahead and start to get the parameter values of this wall. However, these aren't just element instance parameters. These are element type parameters. So I need to ask this wall, what type is it? It's not just the instance, it's the wall type. And the best way that I can show this to you is if I actually go down to a, a door here, open up a view, this can sometimes be a little bit dangerous, but you can see these would be the instance parameters for that wall instance. These are the type parameters for the wall type. So I want to get the type mark and the fire rating for the wall type not the wall instance. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our Dynamo file here and now we can go ahead and get the parameter values by name of these element types. Now in this case once again I do want to go ahead and get two parameter values for this wall type. I'm going to go ahead and use a code block to create a list, in this case, once again, of two parameters, fire rating, and 
and type mark. Goodness. And you can see what I've done is create a list by using the square brackets and a comma. And now when I plug this in, we get just two items because that's how many parameters we're feeding in, right? We get the fire rating as well as the type mark of the wall, but just of the first wall type. So in order to get the, the parameters of all of the wall types, parameter values, we need to go ahead and run this to the longest lacing in addition to using the second level on the parameter name. And essentially what this is doing is it's telling my parameter name to read a list, use the second level of the list inside of the longest count of my element types. And we can see here now I get double the count, 284 of my 142 doors because I have two parameter values representing each of those doors, the fire rating and the type mark. Now that we have these values, we can go ahead and we can feed them back to the wall parameter, the door parameters rather, that we've created. We already have our doors up here, so I'll just go ahead and do a little bit of housekeeping per usual. We have our doors and we are getting the wall type data. Now we can plug this wall type data back into those door elements by element set parameter by name. These elements would be the values that we want to set. The parameter values, we can once again use a code block and a list using our square bracket. Our two parameters that we want to use, we can actually just copy right from our schedule into these quotations, right? What Dynamo is expecting of me. So we have those two parameters. I need to end that in another square bracket. So we've created a list of these two parameters. Once again, our host fire rating as well as our host type mark. Feed that into our parameter name. And once again, now we need our elements, which would be back to our doors. Now we've been running the script in automatic before we execute the script. We will want to go ahead and switch this over to manual. Uh, once again, we want to ensure some of our lacing is set up properly. So we'll use our in levels, right? So for our parameter name, just like we did for our get parameter value by name, switch that over to level two, as well as the values. Because once again, even for our values, which is that get parameter value by name, we are using the levels. There is a list of data that we would like to set back to those parameter values. And we'll want to head, go ahead and switch this over to longest as well. So we can go ahead and wire this. Probably a good idea to go ahead and save the script as well, just to make sure that everything works the way we want it to, and we can open up the script if for whatever reason it does not. Probably a good idea to go ahead and save your Revit model as well. Um, very good idea pretty much any time that we're updating 142 elements. Sync, make sure everything runs the way we expect it to, which as you can see, it did. And we do get some varied values because those are set to a multiple based off of the non-itemization of this schedule. We could of course go under sorting and grouping and tell it to itemize every instance so that we can start to look at 
all of those individual values. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Thanks again. Need help with Dynamo workflows you've seen on Dynamo BIM or any other Dynamo training or assistance? Our sponsor, BIMXT Network, has you covered. Send an email with your request as well as your contact information to info at cadmicrosystems.com. In addition, BIMXT Network holds meetings to bring together bright, curious, engaging people across various disciplines and countries to exchange design and construction technology ideas. BIMXT Network hosts presentations virtually through the online platform as well as in person at locations along the East Coast. For information about the BIMXT Network, please make sure you go to LinkedIn and search for the BIMXT Network group. By joining this group, you'll get information about upcoming meetings, information about previous meetings, including links to the recordings of those meetings, as well as any information about meetings that could be happening near you.